I'm going to have you stay on your feet, so I don't know why you sat down so fast. <laughs> I know. I have to stand up for a little while longer, so you can stand up for a little while longer. Uh, I'll let you take your seats in a moment. A couple of things I want to say. Um, it's an honor and a privilege, as always, to be here. Um, I never take this opportunity and this entrustment lightly. But before I say anything else about what I feel God's asked me to say today, I first of all want to give honor where honor's due because this house has an incredible spiritual mother in Pastor Amy. So I, I want you to know that your leader is not someone that steps up here lightly, that she takes this responsibility in such a way that she handles it with such care and such prayer and such commitment. She's a phenomenal teacher of the Word that you're blessed to sit under on a regular basis. But she loves you, prays for you, stands in the gap for you. And I just honour the fact that she stepped up and said, yes, God, in a season where I don't think this was her first plan or her second plan. I think she was like, God, whatever your plan is, is what I want to do. And that obedience, though at times has come as an inconvenience, because when you're a mama and you're trying to build a family and build a life, and then you have to build the church and all of that, it's a lot. And so I just think today that you should just be very aware on Mother's Day, that God didn't just give you someone, He gave you a great woman of God to help lead you and build you. So we honor you. We honor you. And so before you take your seats, happy Mother's Day to all the mamas. Um, I know it's a day that brings with it a lot of joy, but sometimes a lot of pain. I was told years ago that uh, I was not going to ever be able to have children and my husband and I really struggled to receive that news and we took it to God, which is the only thing you can do when they say it's impossible. You take it to the God that makes the miracles happen and I stand here now as a mama of two adult children and miracles. But I know the journey of not being able to have children and being in church on Mother's Day and feeling like, wow, if this couldn't hurt anymore, I don't know what could, right? So I get it. It's a day where some of you are mindful of a mama that's not here anymore, that's now gone to heaven. She's not here and you couldn't send her a message this morning. And so that brings with it its own pain too. But God is such a good God. He fills the voids that no other person can fill. He is your comforter. He is your restorer. He is the lover of your soul. And so this Mother's Day, remember whatever side of the spectrum you're on, whether this is a joyful day or in some ways a little of a painful day, I pray you'd lean into Him. Let Him be the one that holds you. Let Him be the one that affirms you. Let Him be the one that reminds you that He created you in that mother's womb. That before she ever held you, He was always the one that held you. Before she ever knew you, He already fully know knows you. And before anyone made one plan for your life, He'd already planned every day that you would walk out of your life. And so you are in good hands today, amen. And that was it. That was my Mother's Day message done because now I'm going to preach. So all the men can breathe a sigh of relief because this is not a message about mothering. This is a message that applies to all of us. And I'm so glad that some of you are in the house today because your mother made you come to church because it's Mothering Sunday. And I'm just so glad that God sent me to bring a word because He knew that you would be in the house. And so this is a message for you, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're male, whether you're female, whether you feel you're close to God or far from God, God's gonna speak to you today. And you didn't come for that, but God's glad you're here because He brought you here for that. <laughs> So I'm just going to pray and then you're going to take your seats and then we're going to let God have His way. So God, we thank You in this moment. We honour You in this moment. We thank You that You're a speaking God. 
There's many people that worship many things. Many people that bow down at many idols. But God, you are the only living God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. You are the Word that became flesh and you dwell amongst your people. We are not here worshipping a dead God. We are here worshipping a living God, a listening God, a loving God, a caring God. And so we thank You today that Your Word is like manna. It is fresh and it is relevant. And today, God, I know You're gonna speak to every heart, to every life, because God, when we come around Your Word, You always speak and You always lead us further and You take us deeper. And so God, I pray I will get out of the way so that you can have your way in this house today. In Jesus' Name, Amen and Amen. You may take your seats. Thank you, team. Today I wanna encourage you, and even more than that, I wanna push you into some waters that maybe you've been on the edge of. I want to take you to a place where I show you that there's so much more for you than maybe where you have settled and become comfortable. Today, I don't know how long you have known God or served God, whether you would say you are a stranger to God even, but you find yourself here today. And I want every single one of you to know, no matter how far on in the journey or how much you have yet to start the journey, the thing that I want you to understand today is that God has more for you. He has more for your life. He has more for your future. He has more for your marriage. He has more for your children. He has more for your business. He has more for your dreams. We serve a God who is more than, and yet we live so often with a mindset that is less than. And today I want to help you discover more of Him. I want you to discover more of who He is so you can discover more of who you are. You know, when Jesus walked by the boat of the disciples, when He walked past them and they did not know Him in the way they were going to get to know Him, he did not give them a massive introduction. He did not give them a job description. He did not give them an explanation of where he was going. He said two words. He said, follow me. And I don't know what happened when he said those words, but something inside these young men erupted. Something inside them was magnetically drawn to whatever was in him. And they didn't even think about it. They didn't even discuss it. But the follow me that they heard come out of his mouth got them to leave everything they knew walk away from everything that was their security and begin to pursue this man who they did not know, who they were not familiar with because there was something in him that was speaking to what was deep within them. And I'm telling you, we are called to be the disciples of Jesus and the same ignition that was in them that day must be reignited in us today that we have to get back to the following me, to the getting up out of everything that is familiar, to follow the one into our future. I think we have fallen asleep. We have become lazy in the areas of following him. We have got a busy life, which gives us an excuse to not go after the one that is the giver of life. And today, I want to urge you to get back to that le leading your life through discipleship. To be a disciple, the word, the root word disciples means to be a student. And I think we've got to get back into the classroom of learning what it is to be a follower of Jesus, of learning His ways, of learning about His Word. Maybe we have just become so saturated with information, we have no more desire for revelation. Maybe we've become so busy doing that we have stopped the journey of being. Maybe we have so many opinions that we have stopped seeking the truth so immersed in our culture that we've stopped seeking His kingdom. Maybe our excess has caused us to seek Him less. And yet the Bible tells in James 4 verse 8 that if we draw near to Him, He will draw near to us. Notice where the first draw comes from. 
He's saying there has to be something in you that wants to seek what is in me. It's the drawing in you towards me that draws something out of me towards you. Many of us are sat in our seat of apathy, sat in our seat of criticism, sat in our seat of virtual reality, expecting God to show up and entertain us. When everything about the Word says, no, this is a journey where you're the disciple, which means you do the following. (laughs) Jesus doesn't follow you, you follow Him. Hello? He doesn't come behind you going, okay, I'll just do as you want me to do. He's like, this is the way I'm going. You have to make a choice which way you're going. And I want to remind you today that you are a seeker. You are called to be a seeker of His face, a seeker of His Word, a seeker of His kingdom, a seeker of His truth. But oftentimes we have forgotten that we are seekers. And if you forget that you are a seeker, then you will become the opposite, which is a hider. And there's a lot of us that are hiding And we don't even realize we've become someone that is hiding. We hide behind our agendas. We hide behind our schedules. We hide behind our priorities. We hide behind our shame. We hide behind our excuses. The very first place we see sin enter in Genesis, in the Bible, what is the first consequence of sin? That those that were seeking the face of God are suddenly hiding from the face of God. That Adam and Eve's first response to sin is to hide. They begin to hide themselves. They begin to hide away from the one who they were walking in the cool of the day with before sin came in. And the enemy does the same today. He tries to get you hidden from the truth that he knows will set you free. He tries to get you hidden from the place where you will find the help you need. He tries to get you hidden behind your mistake, behind your failure. But you have to stop hiding and realize you are not the hider, you are the seeker. And seekers find stuff. Seekers get up and look for stuff. Seekers are aggressive. I remember when my kids were little, my son's favorite game was hide and seek. I highly recommend to any mother on Mother's Day, this is a great afternoon activity. Basically, you get to sit down for a while while your kids voluntarily hide themselves. (laughs) What part of this game are we not embracing? You should play it every single day. Yes, of course you can go play hide and seek. Off you go. And so I embrace the game because it's free and it's cheap and they disappear for a while. And so off my kids went and my son was very good at this game and he would get himself into all kinds of different places that you should not probably be able to get yourself. And, And so we were playing the game, I found my daughter and after finding my daughter, my phone rang. And so, of course, I answer my phone and I take the phone call and I'm chatting away and it's a friend of mine and we're chatting about this and chatting about that. And by the time I finished on the phone call, the laundry starts singing to let me know that the load is finished. So I go and take the laundry out and stick the next load in. Now I'm folding the things in the dryer. And about 40 minutes goes by and I remember, oh my goodness, I'm playing hide and seek and I'm the seeker. And so I suddenly think, oh, I've still not found Noah. I need to go find Noah. And so I go around the house and I eventually find my little boy who's climbed underneath his bed. And because he's been waiting so long to be found, he is fast asleep. (laughs) And as I was thinking about this today, I felt the Holy Spirit remind me of that picture. To say this to you, there are some things that belong to you. There are some opportunities and some blessings and some breakthroughs that belong to you, but they are asleep because you've stopped seeking them. They're not awake because you're not looking for them. There are dreams that are dormant because you forgot you're a seeker and you're waiting for something to be delivered to your home and there's no home delivery coming. You have to go and seek it because God has called you to seek 
seek Him, to seek His purpose, to seek His will. And I am on a mission to get every one of you back today into play as a seeker of the things of God. Proverbs 8 verse 17, it tells us if you seek Him, you will find Him. And today all you need maybe is just to get back to seeking and you'll find the answer, you'll find the peace, you'll find the grace, you'll find the purpose. You've been looking in all the wrong places, but if you'll get back to seeking, you will find some things that are not hidden from you, but they are hidden for you. I'm going to take you to a story for us just to see this come alive in different ways. It's a story that's familiar to any that have been around church for any length of time, but maybe you've never looked at it this way. And so today I want to show you a man who decided to seek. And his seeking took him from hidden to found. The seeking took him from confused to clear. The seeking took him from isolated to included. And the seeking took him from being a fraud to being a follower. His story is in Luke 19, and his name was Zacchaeus. We've heard the story, if you've been around church for any length of time, of Zacchaeus. And we've always assumed and talked about Jesus who found Zacchaeus. But the truth is that this miracle began because of something that took place inside Zacchaeus that actually the in, interruption of Jesus into this man's story was actually triggered by something that began in him earlier that day. The Bible tells us in Luke 19 verse 1 that Jesus entered Jericho and he was passing through, so he wasn't stopping and doing house calls. He was passing through, but there was a man there by the name of Zacchaeus, and he was a chief tax collector and he was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was. But because he was short, all the short people said, amen. amen. Because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and he climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Let's stop there for a moment and consider and enter the world of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, we've just been told he's wealthy. He has status. He has position. He has influence. The man you would seem if you were to look at him from the outside, he is the picture of what we may call success. He has a good job. He has profile. He is someone that people are very aware of for good and for bad. He has influence. He has money. And yet, this man is unfulfilled. There is something that all of that stuff is not giving him. There is something missing and he does not know what it is that is missing, but his curiosity is spiked because he hears that this man called Jesus is passing through. And there's something inside him that begins to wake up and he begins to think to himself, I just would like to see. Seeking begins with seeking to see. I'd just like to see for myself. Oh, he'd heard about Jesus. People had told stories about Jesus. But he wanted to see for himself. I wonder what he looks like. I wonder how big he is, how broad he is. I wonder what his voice sounds like. I, I don't want to listen to the reports. I want to see for myself. And his curiosity began to grow. And I think we've got to get back to the place where we are curious enough that we want to see Jesus. We don't want to listen to someone else's testimony anymore. I'm glad He healed you, but I want to see Him heal me. I'm glad He provided for you, but I want to see Him provide for me. I'm glad He restored you, but I, I want to see Him restore me. I don't want to listen anymore to stories about Jesus. I don't want to read anymore of other people's testimonies. I need to see Jesus. And He is in His house, and He was comfortable, and He had money, and He had profile, but something inside Him wanted to see. And I'm here to challenge you, church. Are you still desperate to see Him? 
Are you still desperate to catch a glimpse of an aspect of him that you've not seen yet? Are you still curious to see him in all his glory and all his wonder? Do you want to see him as the one that restores your marriage, that heals your body, that provides? Do you want to see him as your deliverer? Do you want to see him as the way? Do you want to see him as the truth? Do you want to see? Because he's passing by. He's passing by. But it's only the seeker that gets to see. And so he's curious and he's like, okay, I'm going to have to do something because when you're a seeker, you can't stay still. You can't play hide and seek and say, I'm the seeker and then sit down. You have to get up. You have to move. And so he realizes, well, I I, I, want to see him, but I don't think he's going to come to my house right now. So I have to go find where he is. And then he realizes, oh no, there's a problem. I'm short. (laughs) You know, it's amazing to me when we are seeking to see him, the excuse that will present itself. The reason that will show up to tell you, stay where you are, don't even bother. I I need to see him as my deliverer and then the excuse pops up. But how embarrassing is that? Your pride begins to speak and tells you to stay home. I need to see him as the restorer of my, mass- of my marriage, but then up jumps up. Yeah, but what will people say? I mean, they think we got the perfect marriage. And just as you're seeking to see him in an area, your excuse, I'm too busy, I'm too important. You know, I'm too shy. I have too much shame. I have too much pain. The excuse will try to block you from seeing Jesus. Zacchaeus, in the same split second that he realizes his disability, realizes I do have an ability. Though I'm short, I can climb. (laughs) Though I'm short, I can climb. And all of a sudden, his determination overwhelms his disability. His determination overwhelms his excuses. And I'm here to let you know, church, you've got to allow your determination to overwhelm your excuses. Well, I can't be in church because. Well, I can't do that because. Well, I can't really see Jesus because. No, you've got to have more determination than you do excuses. If you want to see Jesus, you're going to have to get over your shot, over your shame, over your failure, over your offense, over your disappointment. And you're going to have to climb. And I don't know what the climb looks like. He had to climb up a tree. I don't know what the climb looks like. I don't know what your climb is, whether it's letting go of something, forgiving someone, you know, leaving the issue at the door, getting more involved, saying, hey, I'm not all that I'm saying I am. Hey, we're not as good as we say we are. I don't know what the climb looks like, but if you climb, I promise you, if you seek to see him, I promise you that he will see you. Because Zacchaeus is in the tree. And he's just seeking to see Jesus. I just need to see him. And as he's in the tree, it says this. When Jesus reached the spot. What spot? The spot where he knew someone is seeking to see me. He's just walked past all the other people in the crowd. He doesn't stop there, but he stops here because there's something different happening here. There's a different kind of seeking happening here. Listen, I don't think he stopped there because he had an earpiece in. And he had a marketing team. They're like, okay, Jesus, a few more feet, tree, wealthy man at the top of it. This is good for our ministry. We could do with a donation right about now. So let's just stop at the bottom of this tree. His name is Zacchaeus. Did you get that? Zacchaeus. Say his name. Get him down. We'll get an offering. And we're out of here. That's not what's going on. Jesus just knew. Someone wants to see me. They've heard about me, but they don't think I'm that good. They want to see for themselves. They want to know if I'm really 
that kind, if I'm really that compassionate, if I really do care, if I really do forgive, if I really do understand, someone wants to see. And so he stops and he looks up and he knows his name. Zacchaeus! Zacchaeus! Jesus calls him by name. A man that was stealing from the people in his neighborhood. A man that was a thief. A man that was living a deceitful life. Jesus calls his name. Why does it matter that Jesus calls his name? Because the name Zacchaeus means pure and innocent one. And Jesus is standing in front of everyone he stole from and choosing to use a name that he knows right now he is not living up to. But Jesus also knows at the end of this encounter, you will become who you are named. You will become the Zacchaeus that I see. And Jesus is calling him, pure and innocent one, I see you. It's not the life you're living right now, but I see it's in you. It's not your reputation, but I see it's your future. It's not who you've been, but I see it's who you are. I'm calling you down because you seek to see me and I now seek to see you. (laughs) Seek to see him. And for the first time, for some of you in a long time, I'm telling you, you feel seen. He won't see you for your badge. He won't see you for your title. He won't see you for your mistakes. He won't see you for your disappointment. He won't see you for all of that stuff that other people see you through. He will see you for who you are because he knows more than anyone who you are because he knows that you belong to him. And when he calls you, you're going to know that that is the only one that really sees who I am. And when you seek to see him, you begin to see yourself. And then Jesus begins to say, Zacchaeus, I don't just want you to seek to see. I want you to seek to stay. Because the next step was not that Jesus moved on. The next step was Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. Not next week, not in three months time. See, this is your problem, some of you. You see Jesus from the treetop, but you never make it to the tabletop. You see Jesus once a month when you drop him for a service, but then you stay in your treetop and see him six months from now at another service. And Jesus is like, no, you're gonna come down because you're seeking to see me, but now you need to seek to know me. And when you seek to know me, you can't do that from the treetop. We can only do that at the tabletop. So Jesus says, hey, come down, because guess what? I'm coming to your house to stay. (laughs) I'm going to stay with you. I'm going to sit with you. I'm going to talk with you. I'm going to eat with you. I'm going to let you see who I am. I'm going to get up close with you. I'm going to be in your space. Well, we don't like that part of Jesus. Because they're like, Jesus, I don't mind visiting you, but I don't really want you to do a home call. I don't really want you to sit at my table because then you'll see it's quite dysfunctional. I don't want you up in my business because then you might ask me to change my business. And I like my business the way it is my business. And so, and so we have this relationship with where we want to maybe see Jesus, but we don't want to stay you got to stay. If you're a seeker, you got to stay. It's your commitment to stay that helps you find things that you don't find when you pass by. I was recently in Rome, and everywhere in Rome, there is tape around pieces of land. And you realize somebody saw something in the ground that they think is valuable. And so instead of walk past it like the tourists do, Someone else has decided not to be a tourist, but instead to be a treasure finder. And they're going to stay on that site and dig until they find what there is to be discovered. And so many of us are Christian tourists. Christians on tour. Well, I'll tour this church this month. 
Then I'll tour another church next month. And now they're confronting me, so I'll go back to the last church that didn't confront me. Now they're talking about tithing for a month, so I'll go to church that's not speaking about giving. Because when it gets to the subject of stay, you run away. I still enjoy playing hide and seek. Yes, I'm a grown woman and I play hide and seek. And our children are grown and we all play hide and seek as a family occasionally because it's free entertainment. And so we'll say our friends uh, and their kids grew up with our kids and so between us sometimes we'll be like it's raining in England all the time. We're like, hey, what should we do? Let's play hide and seek. So all of us, our adult children, all the adults, we play hide and seek. And so on this one particular occasion, I was hiding in my friend's like cupboard upstairs where I know she puts all the junk, all the coats, all the shoes, all the bags that they're not going to use for a while. And so I went in this cupboard and I got right in the cupboard but I didn't just hide I mean I really really was hiding like I put all the bags on top of me like the shoes on top of me like the ski helmet on top of me and I was like in the corner and my friend opened that cupboard five times she was seeking five times open the cupboard nope not in here went away frustrated comes back to the cupboard yeah open no nope, she's not in here and I'm thinking if you just stay just a few seconds later, you would hear, because I'm dying underneath this stuff. If you just stay, you'd see things moving in the cupboard that should not be moving by themselves in a cupboard. But her impatience meant she wouldn't stay. When you stay, you move stuff. When you stay, you lift stuff. When you stay, you reveal stuff. That's why we don't like to stay. And I'm not your pastor, and this is not my church, but I do know that you have discipleship that is on Wednesday night. And some of you just need to go. Just go. Oh, I don't know. I just do Sunday. Yes, exactly. This is the problem. You're just doing Sunday, and then you're complaining that you're not getting the breakthrough, and you're not getting better, and you're not seeing things, and you don't understand the word, and you're not getting friends, and you don't feel you belong. You don't belong because you're not staying. You have to stay in the Word, stay in the house, stay in. So you need to serve, get involved. Seekers serve, seekers stay, seekers see. And as he stays at the table with Jesus, and as he has a conversation with Jesus, he feels Jesus lift stuff off him. He feels Jesus unveil parts that he thought he'd lost of himself. And I love what happens next because this is none of this is from Jesus. This is all coming from Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus got in the tree to see. Zacchaeus came down the tree and had Jesus at his table. And now after seeking to see and seeking to stay, Zacchaeus seeks to stand. And Zacchaeus, after seeing at the table, it says in verse eight, then Zacchaeus stood up. And he said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now, I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. What's going on? The guy a little while ago was stealing. Now this guy's standing up, volunteering to give money away. A guy over here a moment ago was taking things that were not his own. Now over here is offering to give back more than he took. What happened? Zacchaeus, pure and innocent one. It's not now just coming from Jesus' mouth. It's now a revelation inside of his own heart. I am not that man. That is not my future. That is not who I am. It might have been what I did, but it's not who I am. And something is standing up on the inside of him. He starts speaking out words he didn't plan to say. He starts giving what he planned to hold on to. He starts acting in a way that he's never acted before. Why? Because when you seek Jesus, you find yourself. When you seek Him, you find you. 
And some of you are so confused right now because you think you're this and you think you're that, or you were told you're this, or you were told you're that. And I'm telling you, the only way you find who you are is to go to the one that made you in the first place. Some of you are not baptized. It's your next step. You need to seek and stand. I'm going to get in those waters. I'm going to let everyone know. I've kept this secret for too long. I'm going to let everyone know. I am going down in the water and I'm seeking to stand and let everyone know I'm a child of God. I'm redeemed by His blood. I am set free. I'm no longer living in the shadows. You need to seek to stand. A moment ago, the team up here said, hey, and there's a card, a connect card in the back pocket of the chair in front of you. And some of you are like, yeah, whatever. Because you don't want no one to know your name. and You don't want to be a religious person. Hey, I am not religious. And I am not up here to tell you to be religious. Religion helps nobody. It's just rules and legalism that makes you feel condemned. But a relationship with Jesus changes everything. Everything. You don't have to be lonely. You don't have to live a life where you feel no one's there for you. You don't have to feel like I have no future. I am telling you, Jesus is passing by and only those that are seeking Him will find Him. Only those who are pursuing Him and following Him will grab a hold of Him. And I am done with letting Jesus pass my life by. I am done with sitting in the seat of apathy. I am done with saying, I'll get to it later. And I'm telling you, I'm saying to some of you today, you're like, wow, I did not come on Mother's Day for this. I just came to make my mother happy and go for dinner. And I'm sorry to upset your day, but I am not sorry because this could save your day. It could save your day. I'm telling you, it's passing you by today. It's passing you by today. He cares about you so much. He sent a woman from England to mess up your mother's day. (laughs) You know why he did that? Because the last verse in this story says this. Jesus in response to Zacchaeus seeking says this. For the son of man, talking of himself. For the son of man came for what reason? To seek and save the lost. Your father's heart is the heart of a seeker. So if you're his kid, you should carry the same genetics inside of you. And I feel the church in America is going to sleep because we've forgotten to be seekers. We've forgotten to be followers. We've forgotten to be disciples. We've forgotten to stay hungry. We've forgotten to stay following. We've become apathetic. We've become channel flickers for Jesus. We've become hokey pokey Christianity. I'm in, out, I shake it all about. (laughs) Planted in the house, they shall flourish. Seek my face and you will find me. Seek and you'll find your answer. Knock and the door will be opened. Today, maybe just maybe, the very thing that you are feeling has got you so stuck is the very place where God is saying it's time to climb. There is a tree that will give you a view. And when you see me, then I'm gonna call you and I will see you and then you're gonna come down from the treetop to the tabletop. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you need to see him. But maybe you need to come out of your tree and stay. Fill in a connect card. Show up on Wednesday. Get involved. That's your way of staying. Or maybe you've seen and you've stayed, but you haven't taken a stand. And there's just an action that God's looking for from you that's your standing action. I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna involve, I'm gonna go down in those waters, I'm gonna make that public declaration. I don't know what it looks like, but I am here on holy assignment to say to you, covenant, it's time 
to see again. So all across the house, in both locations, I want you to stand to your feet. And I want to pray for you individually, corporately. Just close your eyes right where you're at. Where are you, Zacchaeus? Where are you today? What are you hiding behind? Where have you become so comfortable? What is the excuse that always stops you from the next step? Jesus is passing by. He knows your name. He loves you. And He wants to lead you. But today you have to choose to seek Him. Seek to see Him. Seek to stay at the table with Him. Seek to stand for Him. God, I pray of every life today, awaken the seeker. I pray for a fresh hunger in this house like never before. I pray you would stir up such a passion for your word. I pray that this would be a house known for its disciples, those who are students of you, those who are seekers of you. I pray they would hunger and thirst for your kingdom, for your righteousness, for your faith, for your presence. I pray we will be ruined for anything less. I pray that the seeker in the house would wake up and it would shake up everything about them and everything around them. God, I pray for any who are hiding right now. God, just as you called in the garden to Adam and Eve when they were hiding, you said, come out. Step into the light. Don't hide from me. Feel in this moment, God's calling you to come out from your hiding place. Come out from the place where you have got so comfortable and yet you know it's so not fulfilling anything about you. So as eyes are closed and I close this service, I wanna ask one more thing. If you're in the house today and you say, I need to get my relationship with God right. I've been Zacchaeus, far from Him. Or maybe you've been stuck in the treetop, not willing to come down. Well, today is your immediately day. Today is the don't delay it any longer. Today is the make the decision and walk it out. And if you're in the house today and you're saying, I need Jesus for the first time, or I need to get back to following after Him with all my heart. And I want you just to simply lift your hand right where you are in every campus. You're saying, that's me today. And as you lift your hand, I'm going to see it. And then I'm going to include you in this prayer. But your hand's saying, I'm seeking today. I need to become a seeker again. I need salvation. I need forgiveness. I need, this is not religion. This is a personal relationship with a personal Savior. All those hands that are raised, just put them on your heart right now. If you just lifted your hand. And if you didn't want to stick it in the air because your excuse is you're too shy, then you can quickly stick it on your hand, on your heart. God, you see these hands. God, they are letting you know, like Zacchaeus let Jesus know that day, do not pass me by. God, today these hands, they represent so many things that we've held on to, things we've hidden. Seats we've sat in that, God, we were not called to live in. Excuses that we've hidden behind. And today, God, as we put our hand on our heart, we give them over to You. Today, God, I pray there will be a surrender just like there was in Zacchaeus. God, today I pray as they seek to see You, as they seek to know You, God, they would hear You call their name, the name that You gave them before anyone else labeled them, chosen, loved, son, daughter, beloved. God, I pray today as they hear that name, I pray something inside them would wake up and stand up. Today I pray for those seeking salvation. You said you came to seek and save the lost. 
So today, God, as their heart opens to you, God, flood it with forgiveness, flood it with mercy, flood it with grace, flood it with hope, flood it with a new beginning. Today, let there be a restoration. Let them see you as Saviour, as Father, as Lord. God, we thank you today that when we seek you, we find you. In your name, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen and amen. Let's give her a great God bless you and thank you. We've been well fed this morning. I just feel something so strong right now in this moment that there are people here that have been involved in church and maybe even in leadership in the past. And now you find yourself uninvolved, not activated, and just wondering what's next. This word today is your invitation to tuck back up under the table to get involved in what God is doing in the earth again, to say, I'm all in again, and to make that commitment afresh. I feel that in my own heart, in my own spirit. I think there are some things in my life that I need to get into a higher tree to be able to see something I have not seen before. And I feel challenged by it and activated by it. And I think it's, it's always perfect. God's plans are. But next Sunday, we're kicking off a series um, called The Acts of the Apostles. And I'm going to spend several weeks on the book of Acts. And it's a perfect book to activate the anointing that's on your life for you to hear and see and feel what the early apostles and disciples felt when they were activated. I know that the voice of many waters is in this room today. That's one of the names for the Holy Spirit and that he's speaking some loose sins to you, some things that are gonna require activation this week, obedience, faithfulness, discipline. Maybe go and apologize and ask forgiveness. Maybe open the door, send a text message and say, you know, you haven't heard from me, but I'm here and I'm available and I want to help. God is opening the door for you to step into the brand new identity, the one you were originally called, but the enemy has stolen from you in this season. It's time to take territory back. I learned something early on in my life that while everybody else took a break for the summer, I would take on a big project something that I knew that I'd been avoiding that needed more dedicated time. And what I found is while everybody else was on vacation mode, if I would press in harder, more discipline than I had any other time of the year, and I'd give wake up an extra hour early and dedicate more time at night and put all my effort behind something that I could accomplish something really profound and have momentum going into the fall. When other people are just getting back, you know, in the right seat on the bus and coming out of vacation mode, don't take a vacation from your purpose and your pursuit. Don't take a vacation from seeking God. Put that as a top priority for this next season. Because the enemy does not take a vacation from destroying things in your life. He doesn't take a vacation from tormenting you and trying to steal. He doesn't take a vacation from stealing, killing, and destroying. We can't take a, a vacation from seeking. So in this season, press in. I encourage you, be here on Sunday. Sign up for Wednesday night. Sign up for a small group. Get involved. We've got our staff that are filling in right now in children's ministry. They have been for the last couple months because we don't have enough teachers for our kids ministry. We need that. That is not babysitting. That is ministry. And many times we look at wanting some big ministry invitation or something that seems significant when God's going, but what have I given you right here? There's an opportunity right here to exercise the anointing that's on your life. So I encourage you to let this word settle down in your spirit. Get planted 
Ask God, what is it I need to do? Don't just show up here to receive, but also what can I do to bless the body of Christ? Ask that question and the Lord is gonna be faithful. He's gonna give you pure and clear direction, amen? Can I bless you before we go? And make sure that you grab books in the lobby. You've been blessed today, but the best of what Charlotte has to offer you is in a book. She can mentor you through that, and you're going to be so challenged and inspired. So I encourage you to do that. It's a great Mother's Day gift that you can grab on your way out. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May He make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you peace. And may He cover you with His name, Jesus. Good day, and God bless you. We love you.